Among other things, my grandfather, who, who taught here, was, was not a real fan of Rachel Carson for this very reason, because his, his response was sort of, you know, if it's a choice between, you know, he was very, um, very much an environmentalist, but he's like, you know, if it's a choice between poor people and, you know, birds, I'm siding with the poor people. Um, and I think that there is really a... Well, first of all, the thing that, that I should just say, and, and I should preface this by saying that it's, this is my understanding of this history and these dynamics, which is a little outside my, my field and, and thus comfort zone, um, is that when DDT began, stop, when, when people stopped using DDT for malaria eradication, the primary reason was that the mosquitoes had evolved to be resistant to DDT and that that was already happening at the time in which Silent Spring was written. She talks about the problem of DDT resistance in malaria, in, um, in malaria suppression programs with, um, with DDT. Um, certainly things like the ban, I mean, because sort of one version of that argument that I've seen, um, and, and a very strong version, is, you know, Rachel Carson killed more people than Hitler because, you know, she, there was this ban on DDT and then it couldn't be used in malaria anymore. Um, it wasn't, the ban was, first of all, only in the United States, and second of all, was for agricultural purposes, so it didn't actually apply to DDT programs. Um, now, there's certainly, DDT got a very bad name very quickly after, um, after Silent Spring, um, but that my understanding was that the reason, the rationale for stopping to use it had to do with its effectiveness, and that it, at first it seemed to work great. Kills the mosquitoes, you know, this is the silver bullet to malaria, that really the problem there is that there just aren't silver bullets. That, you know, the same thing with antibiotic resistance or any number of things. At first, a technological fix like that seems great. And then, you know, mosquitoes evolve, um, diseases evolve, so on, and that it, so it simply stops working. Um, now, on the other hand, I mean, I think that there really is an important critique there that needs to be needs to be internalized, which is that if that weren't true, that the malaria resistant, the sort of the resistance in the mosquitoes, what you would have in this history of DDT would be, well, we used it in the United States to stamp out malaria in the southern United States. When we did it, nobody knew that there was a problem. Now, we realize that it's a problem, so there's nothing wrong. We didn't do anything wrong because we didn't know. Now we know so that all of you people throughout the rest of the world can't do it, um, which is essentially the argument that one hears with, you know, sort of carbon emissions and development, right? Well, sure, we had the Industrial Revolution and, you know, we had the kind of post-war American economic boom all driven by oil, and at that point nobody knew that any there was anything wrong with this. Now, China, India, sorry, you guys are too late to the show. Um, and that argument, I think, really, there's there's a lot of problems with that. Um, I think it's also worth um, noting, as based on my understanding of the DDT story, that it didn't actually work, and that that's not actually what happened. I mean, that, that you know that it had stopped working for other reasons. And I think that there are there's also a kind of carbon equivalent to that, right? That we're now at a place where um, instead of just redoing the kind of development model of the 20th century, we can do a different one that is much more, um, not just dependent on, you know, solar energy or so on, but much more decentralized, right? Rather than big projects and focusing on big things that carry energy a long way, um, you know, if energy were be being produced much closer to where it was being used, um, that would address a lot of the energy crisis right there, whatever people are using to produce their energy. Um, so that there are, you know, there are parallels, but it's, a, it's certainly an important question. Um, and as I said, I'm not, you know, the history of malaria fighting and so on, and, and how certainly how mosquitoes evolve is um, outside my particular ballywick. So uh, <laughs> I'm responding from my understanding of that trajectory.